Welcome to Team Wild's Air Power, a new show dedicated to all things air gun. Follow Team Wild as we hunt pesky rodents, big game animals, and everything in between, as well as bringing you all the action from the world of field target shooting and the coolest air gun equipment. So, I have something in this box that regular viewers should be pretty familiar with. In here is a Benjamin Rogue 357 Big Bore Uber Air Rifle. Now, this isn't the one I took to South Africa with me where I shot rabbits, Janet, uh, Mountain Reed Buck, Impala, and that huge uh, Red Hartebeest Bull. This is a new one that's been sent directly from Crosman. Now, over the next 12 months or so, I'm going to be going around the world terrorizing the third game population with this rifle. But for now, we've got to set it up for a hunt for feral hogs in Texas with Joshua White in January. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I set my rifle up for big bore, big game hunting. I've got all my equipment in front of me, but let's have a look in the box first to see what it comes with. So, starting at the sharp end, we have a tube of six 145 grain nozzle bullets. Now, that's not very much, but I suppose it's at least enough to get you started. Now, in Crossman boxes, they don't tend to have too much packaging, which I'm actually pretty okay with. Um, so there's plenty of padding here. Uh, the Rogue itself is kind of suspended in midair, and then we just have a pack of information here, including the operating instructions, six-shot six rotary magazine, and also this safety device, which fits into the breech uh, and can show people that the gun can't be fired. So what we're going to do now is take it out, uh, fit the scope to it, and then we're going to head out and show you how it performs out in the field. So, as you can see here, it has a Picatinny rail fitted to the forend. Now this Benjamin Rogue is a huge rifle, and it's a little bit too big for the cradle I usually use for fitting scopes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this Harris bipod to the rail, and then use that to work from. So it's not just handy in the field, it's also handy in the workshop. So, the rifle's unboxed and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is fit a scope. And I'm fitting one of these bad boys. It's a center point power class 4 to 16 by 56. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, because the 16 magnification range means that I can have that little bit extra precision when zeroing at 50 yards. And secondly, the 56 millimeter objective lens is perfect for low light gathering capabilities. So I'm gonna pop this onto this and then we'll have a look at the ammunition. So now we've kind of got the scope in the right position, all I need to do now is just check for eye relief and also make sure that the crosshairs are level. So that's a little bit close for me, I'm just going to have to move that just a smidgen forward. Now the stock is extendable, so if it was fully extended that eye relief would be perfect. But actually with the Rogue, because it's so front heavy, I do like to shoot it with a much shorter stock length. So we're just going to move that bad boy forward a bit. So now, just a quick check again. It looks to be in the right place. <clears throat> and that is perfect. So we just need to check the alignment. Of course, you can do this with a, with a bore sighter. But I tend to do mine by eye, and that looks about right. Okay, so 
all good, all set up and ready to go. So, we've got the scope fitted. Ah, one thing that might be of interest. Now, when we hunt hogs in Texas, we're going to be using the Night Sight NS200 night vision unit. Now, this is a very, very long rifle. And one of the things we found is with longer barreled rifles, or in particular when we're using a moderator, sometimes the infrared illuminators from the night sight unit can reflect off either the silencer or the end of the barrel. So we've got a sunshade here. Now, obviously shooting at night, you might say, well, what do you need a sunshade for? Well, actually, if we screw this sunshade into the end of this scope, what it does is it extends the length of the shade so that when you put the illuminator on top of the scope, the sunshade will actually block the infrared beam from hitting the barrel and therefore there won't be any glare going into the scope to be captured by the camera. So using a sunshade at night is essential with a longer rifle using an infrared night vision device. Okay, so onto the ammunition. Now we have three different types of ammunition that's been provided by Crossman. Uh, first off are these Benjamin Pursuit. Now they're a flat nose, 127 grain uh, pellet. Now that's probably the smallest one uh, that we have to use. Now I have quite a few of these, as 50 comes in a box. And they're partnered by these, Benjamin Pursuit 158 grain round nose bullets. Once again, similar sort of profile, but as the description suggests, round rather than flat nose. But what I'm going to be using is something I've used quite a lot before, and I know these bad boys work. These are Benjamin Extreme ballistic tip bullets that have been specially made by Nosler. Now these are 145 grain, and as you can see they have a red polymer tip. Now I've shot my red hearter beast with this at 57 yards, and it went clean through a rib on the way in, straight through the heart, and then exited through a rib, but there was caught on the outside of the skin. Now uh, you can see a shot of that here. Now it didn't deform that much, but that ballistic tip, that polymer tip, did dis detach and it allows a much flatter area. So it has the penetration and then when it gets inside, there's enough flat surface area to cause critical damage to the heart and lung area. So I know these perform. I've shot really well in Africa with them. So it's these bad boys that we're going to be zeroing this Benjamin for over uh, hunting hogs in Texas. So there we have it. We've got the scope fitted. We've chosen our ammunition. The next thing we need to do is get the battery fit up and ready for the field. So, although the Benjamin Rogue is a pre-charged pneumatic, it has an electronic control mechanism. Crosman's patented eval technology delivers precision shot-to-shot -shot consistency, ensuring your shot placement in the field is also pretty consistent. Now, I took my Red Hotter Beast with a kneeling shot off sticks at 57 yards and put it, well, pretty much inch perfect. That's the confidence you have when shooting a precision instrument such as the Rogue. Now, I've seen on some forums and received a little bit of criticism myself from people saying that maybe the Rogue isn't as accurate as some people would say. Well, I'm not a 100 yard target shooter, I'm a game shooter, and what I need to do is, is deliver a shot till the kill zone of the animal as precisely as possible. So I don't need to be putting pellet on pellet. What I need to be doing is putting pellet on heart. So as you can see, here is the, um, the enclosure. Now it's weather resistant, but not weather proof. As you can see, there's no seals on here. So I think it will take kind of some splash, maybe a little bit of light drizzle, but I wouldn't take it out in a downpour. But then again, I don't tend to go hunting, particularly with an air rifle in a downpour. So all we need to do now, get two AA batteries and we're good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is put some air in it. Now, the Benjamin Rogue fills from a standard quick fill adapter here at the muzzle end. There's a screw fitted dust cap which keeps everything nice and tidy. Now the working pressure, the safe working pressure of the Rogue 
is 3,000 PSI, which works out um, in European money at 206 bar. And we've got to be very careful that we don't put too much in because there is a safety mechanism that will prevent the rifle from discharging if it's over 3,000 PSI. But we can see over here on the display exactly what the PSI is as we're filling it up. Thousand psi. Oh, it's just—it's the first time it's been charged, and the air cylinder is pretty warm. So that's going to fluctuate a little bit until it's settled down. Once you've uh, filled it a few times and we've had it working, it should steady on. The next thing we need to do is program the Rogue for the specific ammunition and the velocity that we're going to be shooting at. So we're going to be using 145 grain uh, nozzle ballistic tip bullets, which are classified as heavy. Now the three modes we have here are discharge, which is exactly what it says, um, if you want to uh, dis discharge the rifle just to get rid of a pellet. Um, otherwise we have a high or a medium uh, power setting. Now a media power setting will deliver six shots at 2,910 2, PSI, but we want to go with a high power setting, which gives us three full power shots. So press the mode button again and it's all set and ready to go. So, now everything's set up and ready to go, we're going to head out onto the range and stick a few shots down. Before we go, we're going to have a closer look at the scope we're going to be looking through. This is a centre point power class 4 to 16 by 50 and it's packed full of useful features for what is a pretty affordable scope. Starting from the eyepiece here, it has a knurled, easily adjustable eye relief adjustment uh, ring right there. So, no unnecessary undoing and redoing, it can be adjusted pretty quickly. Now this is a really useful feature when you're using a night sight to make sure everything sits in focus. Then moving forward, we have a nice, large, easy to adjust magnification ring. Now that has a big bulbous knob on the end there, which is really useful when you've got gloved hands. So moving forward, we have this 30mm one-piece aluminium tube, which offers perfect light transmission. Then we get to the um, focus adjustment, obviously without having a 4 to 16 magnification range you need to be able to adjust at shorter ranges. Now that's right the way down to 10 yards, very unusual for a scope which is designed for use on four ball rifles. Now one of my favourite features is up here. These target style adjustment turrets have this really cool locking ring. So if you tighten that right the way forward, you can't accidentally change zero when you're out in the dark. So you never know what's going to happen. You might put your rifle into a slip and these knobs can, if they're unlocked, be easily adjusted, which means your point of aim is going to be off. So another really useful but often overlooked feature. Moving forward, full-sized 56mm objective lens with multi-coated lenses. Great for uh, low light conditions, but in particular they've got a like a rain shield which prevents water from sitting on the lens in inclement weather conditions and as you've seen earlier on it also has this nifty sunshade adapter which as it described is a sunshade but also is very useful for cutting the glare from an infrared illuminator. So I'm quite excited about using the scope, I've heard lots of good things about it, let's head out and see how it works on the range. Tune in to Team Wilds Air Power next week as we see just how well the phenomenal Benjamin Road 357 performs on the range as we assess its ballistic performance and accuracy. Subscribe to Team Wild TV to keep up to date with everything airgun in our brand new show, Team Wild's Air Power.